This video is designed to provide helpful hints for those of you trying to put together a Humminbird Minn Kota package that will allow you to benefit from networking features. Let's check out my boat to give you an example of how to set up a network using Helix units. A Minn Kota trolling motor with iPilot link is a key to the whole system. The iPilot link allows you to connect your Humminbird units via Ethernet using cables. Additional one boat network items such as Minn Kota shallow water anchors such as raptors or talons, Canon optimum downriggers and fishhawk depth probes can connect wirelessly via Bluetooth connection. If you decide you are going to purchase a Helix and you want it to be part of a network example with an iPilot link trolling motor, the one boat network, then you need to make sure it has an N on the end. In this case, G3N, and the N is standing for network. So be very careful when you make your purchase that you have the N at the end if you want to network it into a system. If you purchase a Solex unit, they are all networkable. So you don't have to be concerned about the N. So the Solex series G2, you'll notice there's no N on any of the units. The same will be for the G3, there will be no N. So please don't let that confuse you. Humminbird units that are integrated with an iPilot link trolling motor can give you such exclusive features as follow the contour, Circle mode is another exclusive iPilot link feature, as well as full iTracks capabilities. Near the end of the video, you will find a summary of cables that will help simplify your purchase. I wanna take you through my one boat network, just so that you get an idea of how everything is linked together and works. So I have an Ultrex and the iPilot link model is going to allow you to take advantage of the one boat network features. So let's just take a little look around here. On my Ultrex, I have a Jura safe lock right down here, which again is going to help deter some thieves from getting your trolling motor. And I run a dual system that you can see in the distance there. I'm running a Mega 360 and i have the mdi version of the trolling motor as i really like down imaging on the front so i will take you up here and you can see that i have two helix 12s mounted up here they are both mdi pluses g3ns and that will allow you to take advantage of the mega 360 features with the one boat network and the iPilot link system, I can take either one of these control heads and operate the trolling motor, raptors, any other accessories that uh, are part of the one boat network can be operated from the head unit. So again, that is a key feature being able to use your control head as a tool to operate the different systems in the boat. The five port ethernet box is the brains of the operation. This is located under my console and is going to connect everything in my one boat network together. The five port ethernet box, which is also known as an ethernet hub or an ethernet switch, has five ethernet cables plus one power cable. The ethernet cables are connected with one being from the iPilot link Minn Kota trolling motor and the other four are connected to my helix units. The helix units do not plug directly into the ethernet cable therefore a dongle is required. As you have just seen the five port ethernet box is underneath the console and I have two units at the console so it's a very short distance from the ethernet box to the unit so i am running a five foot ethernet cable with a dongle to each unit so again that's two five foot ethernet cables 
with a dongle each to each unit. And that's how I am connecting those to the ethernet box. Just a quick explanation of the dongle. So the ethernet cable is coming out here and there's a connection right here. The ethernet cable does not plug directly into the back of a Helix. It does into a Solix, but not the Helix. So whenever you are purchasing Helixes and you are networking, you're going to need this little dongle here, which just basically goes in and allows you to plug it into the back. So think of the dongle as a little adapter cable for the Helix, and that's basically what it is. I am at the console of the boat right now, and I have a site imaging unit on the right, and I have on the left a Chirp GPS unit. As the main unit is directly in front of me, I am mainly using this for mapping and just getting my 2D high-speed reading as I am running down the lake. The site imaging unit I am going to use for the higher level functions of side imaging, down imaging, and it just saves me toggling back and forth between the different panes. That's one of the big advantages of having two units at the console is you don't have to, again, go back and forth between the active panes, which can be a little annoying at times. Here's a quick view from underneath my mount for my two MDI pluses at the front of the boat. And you can see that I have e-locks made by Jurasafe on both of them, again, to help deter theft. So again, it's an excellent idea. And from here, I have my two 15-foot Ethernet cables running back to the console and the Ethernet box. You can see up here, just on the front pad, that I have my heading sensor with my iPilot Link trolling motor. And the heading sensor is all that I need to run the Mega 360. You do not need the AS GPS HS puck. And a little lot of confusion out there. So if you do buy an iPilot Link system, the heading sensor that comes with it will allow you to save waypoints on your Mega 360, which is a pretty darn cool feature. Here's a little different angle from the MDI Plus units. And you're gonna notice underneath here that I do have an AS GPS HS puck, but it is not for the Mega 360 waypoints. If I want to save waypoints on the front of the boat, I can actually run that to my console and that is exactly where that puck is going. It's running to my console unit so that if I do decide that I want to save my waypoints from the front of the boat as opposed to the console, I have that option. And again, that puck is running from there, the cable's going underneath, and is coming down through my rod locker back to the console. Now it's time to get the one bolt network wiring all connected to the five port ethernet box to allow everything to talk and communicate. So there is a cable from the trolling motor that's gonna go directly to the box underneath the console. I'm going to take two 15-foot Ethernet cables to run from the front of the boat to the console, as that's all that I need. And as I mentioned earlier, the puck cable is going to go underneath. So all four of those cables are going to come down through the rod locker. I've got things neatly tucked up underneath so that it's not messy and everything is going to again attach underneath. I did talk about the puck feature so you can see that I have the puck connection here that I can put into the bus if needed. I'm at the back of the boat here showing you my transducer setup. I have a bass boat so I use a high speed transducer along with my side imaging transducer. The side imaging transducer is over here and the high speed transducer is over here. The high speed transducer, the line that goes up through the middle should be aligned with the hull in an area with little turbulence. That's just a basic setup. I'm not going to go into full detail. With my side imaging transducer, I do use the coin leveling trick for those of you that are familiar with it. These 
two transducers can be connected with a Y cable, which I'll go into more detail later on in the video. And they will go into my side imaging unit at the console. Please keep in mind when you are putting on your side imaging transducer that the beams are going to be shooting out to the left and to the right of the unit. So you need to make sure that they have a clear view that is unobstructed. You are running a bass boat or a boat that has higher speeds and the high speed transducer will give you better readings at say 25 miles an hour or better. I would recommend a metal bracket as opposed to the standard bracket that comes with it. I'm in the back of my Humminbird catalog and down at the bottom, there's a section with the model group number and you will see a number in the shaded part and then you need to look for your unit. So in this case, I'm looking for a high speed transducer that is going to go with my Helix 12 Chirp GPS G2N and that is what I have at my console. And in the shaded section is the number eight. So now I'm going to follow up along the chart and I'm going to go to transducers and I find number eight. And the T means temperature, so I want one with temperature. So the high speed transducer that I am using on the boat is XNT920T. I talked about the metal bracket, so I'm going to follow along to the transducer mounting options and I am going to go for the MHXMXNT, which is the metal bracket I referred to in the video. I'm back in my catalog and I need to find a Y cable to join my side imaging transducer and my dual beam. So I am running a Helix 12 MSI GPS G3N as my side imaging unit at the console. So I see the number one in the shaded section beside it. So now I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to find the number one under transducers and it gives me all of my options. So I'm going to go and scroll right across the top. And as I get to the far side on the next page of the catalog, I can see my splitter cables. And the 9M SIDBY is the cable that I am going to need to use to join my two transducers on the transom to my side imaging unit at the console. This is the brains of the One Boat Network and this is the five port ethernet box I was referring to. It is ASETH5PXG. Here are the ethernet cables. In my boat I have two five foot which is the ASEC5E and those two five footers go from the ethernet box underneath my console to the two units at the console. The two Helix MDI pluses have the 15 foot, which is the ASEC 15E, and those connect the MDI pluses to the ethernet box underneath the console. Here is the ethernet dongle. It is ASECQDE, and it is formally an ethernet adapter cable, but it is often referred to as a dongle. I have a built-in mega down imaging into my iPilot Link Ultrex, so therefore I am using a Helix, so I need an adapter cable. So since I have a Helix 12, Helix 8 to 12 require the MKR MI1. If you're running a Helix 7, it's an MKR MDI2, and that will work with the built-in mega side imaging or the built-in mega down imaging. I see lots of posts regarding no depth on mega 360. As you have seen in my video, I have two units up front. I use one unit for map, 2D, down imaging, and one of my units is dedicated for 360. If you only had one unit up front and you wanted to pair your mega 360, with a transducer to get depth, then listen carefully. The Mega 360 using an external transducer, you would use the 9M360 to DDIY as you see below. If you have a Mega 360 plus a built-in 
on your trolling motor mega imaging transducer, then you need to use the 14 M360 2DDIY. It is great on this combination with the built-in mega imaging transducer. For example, I have a down imaging, and if I had one unit, I would likely use mega down imaging plus mega 360, and that would be a great double view on my unit. Apex and Solix users that want Mega360 with depth will use the 14M360 DDIY as well as the Helix users with a built-in Mega Down Imaging or Mega Side Imaging Transducer. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please check out my YouTube channel, Steve Chasson Fishing. If you enjoy what you see in there, hit like and subscribe. It's free. Thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to sharing more helpful hints videos in the future.